the latest and greatest AMD APUs with their insanely powerful integrated graphics and ridiculous model names might be the hot new thing in mini PCs right now, but their pricing is definitely on the extravagant side. We're not paying you by the word, Lisa. For anyone who isn't looking for bleeding edge technology and just wants a good performance mini PC for a reasonable price, the Ryzen 7000 powered Minus Forum UM760 might fit the bill. B one question though, do, do I have to call it the uh, slim? Minus Forum should be applauded for their body positivity, but let's not mince words. The UM760 Slim is a normal sized mini PC. It's a bit shorter in height than some other Minus Forums, but it's about the same as some of its competitors, and the footprint is also pretty standard, so unless you plan on stacking them into a mini PC burger, I don't think the size is a huge issue. There's a bit more plastic in its construction that might go some way to explaining the name, but it's more to do with the price. At just £329 or 319 US dollars, this is aggressively reasonable for a Zen 4 powered mini PC, but the reason for that isn't just down to cheaper materials. At the heart of the system is a 6 core Ryzen 5 7640HS with Radeon 760M graphics. I've looked at several of its big brothers before, so I'm prepared for a somewhat cut down experience. The iGPU is the same Phoenix series as the 780M I've looked at in the various Ryzen 7s and Ryzen 9s, but with 512 cores instead of 768, and of course being 7000 series rather than 8000 series, you're missing out on some neural processing cores, which means reduced performance in dedicated AI workloads like... Um, connectivity is scaled back compared to the rest of Minus Forum's range, but what it lacks in quantity, it makes up for in quality. There's two front panel USB 3 Type A's, a pair of USB 2's at the back, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and a full bore USB 4 Type C port. I'd like to have seen an Oculink port, but I guess we can't have everything. What with this ultra slim form factor and all. Running quickly through the synthetic tests, the Cinebench multi-threaded score of 12.7K is on par with the i9-12900H I tested in Minus Forum's own NAB9, but over 20% slower than the 8-core Ryzen 7000 models. Geekbench 6 scores 10.7K, again putting it in the same company as in Cinebench, whereas the GPU tests are a bit more interesting. There's already a pretty big gulf between Ryzen machines and 12th and 13th gen Intels, and that's still there in both OpenCL and Vulkan, but of those Ryzen chips, this one's pretty much at the bottom of the stack. It even loses out to some 6000 series APUs. That goes equally true in 3 d Mark. TimeSpy has an overall score of 2.6K, being propped up by a respectable 8K result in the CPU test, and Firestrike manages 6K overall with a physics score of over 20K. In Blender, the classroom render completed in 7 minutes 12 seconds, a few seconds slower than a current gen Core Ultra 5, and over 30 seconds faster than a 12th gen i9. DaVinci Resolve is interesting to me as someone who edits a lot of videos, and a big benefit of the Ryzen 5 7640HS over older Zen architectures and previous gen Intels is support for AV1. For instance, scrubbing through a timeline of an H.265 file is not slow, but the viewport doesn't update very often. While doing the same thing on an AV1 file isn't instantaneous by any stretch, it is by far the better experience. If you want a budget mobile video editing PC and can convert to an AV1 workflow, this is potentially a great option. As far as exports are concerned, the GPU driven H.265 and AV1 renders were on par with the Ultra 5125H, with the former being almost 2 minutes faster than the old i9.
you're probably not going to buy one of these mini PCs as a gaming machine, but if you want to play some competitive online shooters in your lunch break and aren't against dropping some settings, the 7640HS actually has got some power behind it. Apex Legends can run at full 1080p at north of 100fps on average, with settings dropped to low. That's DX11. I also tried the DX12 mode, which I don't remember seeing before, but it dropped frames by about 10% and didn't offer any obvious benefits, so there's not really any good reason to use it in this case. Counter-Strike 2 isn't a bad experience either, once more coming in at a little over 100 FPS on average and not dropping much below the 60 mark. It's not competition level performance of course, but if you want to enjoy some casual gunplay and various people shouting over voice chat, you could do worse. Normally at this point I'd be testing Fortnite, but uh, I got tired of making excuses for its constant stuttering, so I've benched it in favour of the old classic PUBG BG. You do have to drop settings to the point where it looks almost like the mobile game, but it doesn't hinder gameplay at all, and you can have a pretty acceptable experience at 1080p, with an average of 84fps and lows just under 60. Finally, Overwatch looks and plays just fine at 1080p low, averaging 85 with lows in the mid-60s. For context, a Ryzen 7 machine from this generation can pull about 120 to 130 FPS, but some of the old 12th gen Intels can only manage around 60. Right now, I think the UM760 Slim occupies a price to performance sweet spot. You can get much better performance in this form factor, pretty much anything with a Ryzen 7 7840HS or 8845HS will outperform it with no real downsides in terms of size or efficiency, but you will have to pay for the privilege. There are a few models out there with the 6800H and 6900HX for similar prices to this one but they'll be a bit less efficient due to the older architecture. On the Intel front, most competitively priced units will be based on 12th or 13th gen CPUs, which will not only underperform in graphics, the CPU also throttles heavily under load to avoid overheating, whereas this Ryzen 5 generally performed quite gracefully under pressure. If you're interested in picking one of these up for yourself, there's a link in the description. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.